So, we're finally here. The last race of the 2023 Formula 1 season. Well, I guess there's Abu Dhabi, but they'll have about as much action as Harrison Ford shagging a dead horse for two hours. Or Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The Las Vegas Grand Prix has been one of the most anticipated events on the Formula 1 calendar. According to Formula 1, if you're an average fan, or driver, or Las Vegas resident, you know Max Verstappen will win, then you probably don't give a shit. At least the weekend gave me plenty of things to talk about, so let's document our beloved sport throwing its integrity off the roof of that fake Eiffel Tower thing. Let's dive into the comedy review for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. The build-up for the Las Vegas Grand Prix has been going on for a while now, and as much as Formula 1 has sucked off its new race in the past 12 months, it seems like every time we actually heard about it, something had gone horribly wrong. Be it construction workers dying making grandstands, Formula 1 covering up the peasant viewing spots, the ticket prices you could only afford if you sold your daughters to ISIS. Look, I have the 100k plaque now, I don't give a f anymore. Las Vegas residents in particular weren't happy with what Formula 1 had done to the iconic Vegas Strip, the sport really pushing its net zero agenda by means of deforestation. We also had the sphere to consider, the city's new landmark gaining significant attention on social media. Plenty chimed in in what should be displayed during the race, and we had some good options here. Abu Dhabi 2021, Kimi Raikkonen looking like he wants to kill you, RPM gets my vote for Gorlot the Destroyer, if you ask me, why not Harrison Ford shagging a dead horse? Formula 1 was happening as well, of course, and many teams opted to shake things up with their new liveries. Red Bull rolled out a fan design I actually liked, whilst Ferrari turned heads, swapping their bare black carbon for this white look, which I'm sure has pissed someone off on Twitter somewhere. Further down the grids, McLaren had a new livery, though you'd be hard-pressed to notice. Alfa Romeo tried out blackface, and Alfa Tauri identified as a f***ing zebra. Williams, meanwhile, decided to let this pass quality control, but by far the worst design was from Alpine which is no surprise given they're French. Seriously though, it just looks like this car is covered in tea stains, or Otmar Safnau has come back and pissed over bits of it. The real shambles was set to come in FP1, however. I could have woken up early for this, now I'm very glad I chose not to. The session had only lasted for nine minutes before Carlos Sainz pulled to the side of the road with a gaping hole in the bottom of his Ferrari. When Esteban Ocon was revealed to have suffered from a similar problem, the session was red flagged on safety grounds. Okay, fine, you tore my dick off over not having this last week, so here you go. The culprit was revealed to be none other than a loose drain cover, though more importantly, I wonder if Ferrari and Alpine will now be disqualified over non-existent planks. That was meant to be a joke, and I'll be honest, I thought Formula 1 were playing a very late April Fool's prank when Carlos Sainz was awarded with a 10-second penalty to replace a battery damaged in the incident. Yet, this sport is so self-indulgent, they never considered the possibility of them cocking up when making the rules. Only the ability to shut up long enough so they didn't have to do anything anyway. With every manhole cover now having to be inspected, FP2 would have to be delayed. Thankfully, with Las Vegas being a night race, the facilities are in place to accommodate this. And fans who travelled far and wide for the event could be kept happy. Oh, never mind, they've been sent home. Apparently, it wouldn't be safe to have people sat in the grandstands during FP2, as there wasn't enough staff present to cover the delay. Not gonna lie, F1, your staff didn't help much in Mexico a few weeks back. Just let all these multi-millionaire F1 fans have their fun. Second practice would thus take place, looking like a COVID event, except Romain Grosjean wasn't on fire this time. Charles Leclerc would top the session, as many cars got to grips with the new circuits and the rather chilly conditions. This race was set to be one of the coldest on record, with Formula 1 apparently not factoring temperature in when preparing for the event. A bit like how they didn't factor human rights in when accepting all that Saudi money a few years ago. Back to the on-track action, and several drivers found themselves running wide at turn 12, wherever that is. Traffic was also proving to be an issue, with Hamilton holding up Daniel Ricciardo, though hashtag Bless received his karma when he was in turn blocked by Sainz. I'd now like to apologise, as I have now slagged off the great Lewis Hamilton. And judging by the comments of my last video, I'm now a raging racist who should die of cancer. 
Thanks again for that, by the way. We might as well move on to Friday, or Saturday, depending on where you are in the world, with George Russell topping FP3 in his Mercedes. It seemed the drivers were also confused over what session it was, with the Claire and Magnussen racing like it was for the championship at several points in the hour. FP3 would then also end prematurely when Alex Albon hit the wall and his left rear tyre went for a drink in one of the nearby casinos. Which means we have to do this again. That meant we likely didn't see the most representative order going into qualifying, and I know that because Logan Sargent was third. OF1 branding this as quote, defying the odds was unnecessary and just heinously offensive. Oh, who am I kidding? I made this video a few months back. Let's move on to qualifying then, with the end of the first session marked by a yellow flag caused by Yuki Tsunoda. We'll never find out what happens here, but the Japanese driver would end up starting P20 on Sunday. The real shock of Q1, though, would be the McLarens. The Papaya cars expected to struggle this weekend, though both drivers ending up in the drop zone is likely the last thing the team wanted. Ricardo beat them both, though, so I don't care. The Honey Badger would scrape into Q2 in 15th, perhaps helped by his old and maybe future teammate Max Verstappen, who took revenge for Brazil 2018 by diving down the inside and ruining Ocon's final lap. The Dutchman would normally serve a penalty for this, but thankfully for him, he was in a Red Bull. Come Q2, however, the other car of Sergio Perez would be in real trouble, though for once this wasn't really his fault. Red Bull made the mistake not sending him out for a final run, and also forgot that this was Sergio Perez. Hashtag Bless would also fall in the second session, qualifying 11th and being beaten by both Williams cars. Yes, that includes Logan Sargent. Go Tifi, step aside, there's a new challenger in town. Sargent would continue to impress in Q3, ending the session P7 and only a fraction behind teammate Alex Albon. Up at the front, meanwhile, Leclerc would set the pace on the initial runs, with Sainz and Verstappen rounding out the top three. That order wouldn't change, as unlike F1, the car's stiffy for Vegas wouldn't extend to the final runs, though Sainz's penalty will drop him out of the top ten, granting us another prime opportunity to watch Verstappen sail past Leclerc into Turn 1, provided he even makes it that far this time. Now, this is usually where I jump straight to the Grand Prix, but given it's Vegas, that means apparently we need more driver introductions. Actually, our second driver introductions of the weekend. I just didn't cover the first batch because nothing of interest happened. He's a multiple race winner from Mexico. It's Sergio Chefko Perez! Yeah, I didn't really know what I expected, to be honest. To make matters worse, one of the driver parade cars turned out to be a quadrant fan in disguise as it broke down and leaked oil all over Verstappen's grid spot. Would that stop the Dutchman? No, and neither were Fernando Alonso's brakes as he dived into Turn 1 and had a little stroll moment on the apex. Perez, Sainz and Bottas all found themselves caught up in the drama as well, whilst the virtual safety car came out allowing the marshals to clear the little bits of F1 cars strewn all over the Las Vegas circuit. Now you might be screaming at me for not mentioning that Verstappen's pass on the Claire was slightly out of the confines of the track, though in my defence it didn't look like Red Bull had clocked that either, as for some reason they seemed to think this was perfectly legal. In rare scenes, however, the stewards awarded Max with a 5 second penalty. That'll sure knock his confidence or something. Admittedly, when Verstappen was perfectly calm on the team radio about driving away into the distance like usual, the Ferrari of Leclerc was keeping him honest. And when Lando Norris decided to take a special trip to a casino they call the Medical Center, we got a full safety car to close the pack back together. we get going again, but Max would leave Leclerc napping and extend his gap to two seconds on the restart. It all looked to be over, though that wasn't quite the case. Yet, anyway. Come lap 16, Verstappen's tyres were falling off the cliff, the Ferrari seizing its chance and diving down the inside. There were more impressive moves further back in the top 10, which would have been even more impressive were they not on Logan Sargent. With Max in the pits though and having to deal with that 5 second penalty, things seemed to be going in Ferrari's direction. That was until we realised that Checo had pitted on lap 1, and the safety car from before had just brought the Mexican back into contention for the first time since... 1950. This was bad news for Lewis Hamilton, who was trying to secure P2 in the championship, and Daniel Ricciardo his rightful place alongside Max Verstappen at Red Bull. 
trust it to be Daniel's worst enemy there, Nosca Piastri, who would ruin the Australian's career prospects for a 364th time when contact with the Mercedes gave both cars a puncture. The Silver Arrows day was about to get even worse when George Russell made contact with Verstappen, in an incident which I'm sure in George's mind had nothing to do with him whatsoever. With more debris out on track, we saw yet another safety car. This should be the perfect time for the front runners to pit, so can you guess who didn't? Leclerc had managed to regain the lead from Perez, but now the Mexican was right behind on newer tyres a bit like a more sh version of the last lap from Abu Dhabi 2021. To the shock of no one then, Perez sailed by as soon as he had access to DRS, though I'm not quite sure we expected the Ferrari to come back on Checo only a few laps later. Their squabbling allowed Verstappen to close back in, the Dutchman claiming the Red Bull pair should quote, work together. Max's interpretation of this though was just to pass both of them and leave a draggy Checo in the mud as he moved into the lead. That left us with yet another last lap battle for a spot on the podium. With absolutely no help from his teammate whatsoever, Perez found himself to be a sitting duck on the straight and Leclerc made it by with a dive bomb down the inside. All the while, Max crossed the line to win and I should have just recorded this bit on Friday, shouldn't I? So did the Las Vegas Grand Prix live up to the hype then? Well, that really depends. If you're Formula 1, who saw this event as on par with the rebirth of f***ing Christ, then no, because nothing could match what they'd marketed this race to be. That said, for the casual fan, many of whom I feel came into this expecting it to be a complete and utter shambles, Vegas, you did well. Okay, Friday was a complete and utter joke, but once those teething problems had been solved, we got a great race, with plenty of overtakes and action despite the Verstappen win. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on the event down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the comedy review, why not like and subscribe as we gear up for Abu Dhabi and the season finale next weekend. As always, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all my patrons and channel members for all of your continued support. And if you'd like to get involved in any of that, then you can find out more through the links in the description below. As I said, I'll see you next week for Abu Dhabi, but until then, have a good one.